Hi, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today is the second day since we started statistics. Today we are going to see about two important topics. The first one is central tendency and the second one is variability. So today's session is going to be a bit different. I'm going to use, I'm going to swap whiteboard as well as uh, screen sharing. Uh, just to explain these concepts well enough, like before going into the tutorial. So first one is uh, I want to explain the basic concepts of uh, central tendency, which means that uh, checking the mean, median, mode, as well as skewness and protosis in the actual data. So as you see in the chart, uh, so here, uh, these concepts are really important and then this helps us in conveying something that is happening in the data set as such. Uh, so the mean, median and mode need not be exactly same. So mean is the, the actual like uh, taking up the sum of the measure and dividing it by the uh, total number of uh, uh, total number of records. So it gives us the mean. Uh, median is nothing but the figure that comes up when you sort all these values from the lowest to the highest. The one that is coming up right in the middle is the median and mode is the element or the value that has been repeated most number of times in the data set. <coughs> so that's the mode. So generally in a large data set, all these three values would be very different from each other. Uh, and coming to the next one is the two important topics, which is skewness as well as protosis. So skewness is uh, used in order to measure whether the distribution of uh, the data set that we have, whether is it uh, normally distributed or is it skewing towards or leaning towards one side of the curve. For example, like uh, uh, the one that is uh, leaning towards the right, we call it as narratively skewed, as you see on the board here. So what happens is when it is narratively skewed, the mean and median, everything will be shifted towards the right hand side. In case of a positively skewed data set, what happens that the mean, median, mode, everything would be shifted towards the left hand side of the curve. So these measures helps to understand whether there is to understand if there is any skewness in the actual data set. And protosis is another important metric in the statistics that helps us to understand the extent of outliers that is present in the data. For example, when we have an higher protosis, it means that there is a high chance of uh, having a large number of outliers in the uh, data set. And when the tutosis number is quite low, it means that uh, our data is well distributed and the number of outliers or probability of having a large outlier, number of outliers is very less. Uh, so you can see the charts uh, over there where in case of uh, uh, a data set that is having a very high tutosis, you will see that the peak will go, uh, like it will be like extended to the top uh, uh, as compared to a normal distribution. And in case of a distribution with a low tutosis value, it will be much shorter than the normal distribution. It will be pretty much flat. Uh, so these are all the important uh, uh, things that needs to be learned in the central tendency. So it, it, this helps us to understand about the data the distribution of the data that we have, that we are going to study or that we are going to analyze. So now let's get into the tutorial and see how to uh, calculate or how to get all these values from an actual data set. And we will again come back to the whiteboard in order to explain the concepts in variability, like what's an variance, what is standard deviation, what is the standard error of mean. So for now, let's go into the tutorial and uh, uh, see the implementation or how to calculate using Python the central tendencies uh, in the data set. Now let's see how to use Python and calculate various central tendency related metrics. So here in order to calculate all these metrics, we need to have a, a few more additional libraries that are related to statistics. So as you see on my screen, apart from pandas and numpy, I have a few more additional uh, libraries uh, which are specifically useful for today's tutorial session. Uh, so let us import all these required libraries and I'm going to read the data set that we are going to use today. So the data set that we are going to uh, use today has an object, uh, which is uh, nothing but an identifier, uh, which is kind of an ID, and we have a measure. So now let's see how this data is uh, distributed. Uh, 
So I'm going to use the stored lamp to see the actual distribution of the data. So this is how our data is distributed. So by looking uh, into this particular chart, it seems like a normal distribution, but let's get into the various central tendency related metrics and then see and understand what this data set is looking like. So let me execute this and explain each one of them in detail. So as you see, the mean value is 100.594. So mean is calculated by adding up all the measures and by dividing the uh, dividing the sum by the number of objects that we have in our data set. And uh, the median would be the uh, when we sort all these measures from the smallest one to the largest one uh, on the right hand side, the one that comes up in the middle would be the median. And in case of uh, mode, the mode would be the value that is getting repeated the large number of time. So here mode is 86 that is getting repeated the highest number of times. In some cases, uh, since we are looking at the frequency here, it is possible for us to uh, come up with multiple modes. Uh, so the modes need not necessarily be very much close to the mean or median. It could be slightly uh, uh, a bit uh, away from the mean or median. And coming to the skewness and ptosis, uh, the skewness we can see the value is slightly negative. Uh, so as we saw like when it is negatively skewed, it means that uh, the distribution would be slightly inclined towards the right hand side. So when I go back to our distribution, so what I can see is I can see that there are some low values here on the left hand side, which means that maybe the, the curve is slightly inclined towards right hand side, but maybe it's not quite visible for the, uh, for the knitted eye. We can see the values here are quite low as is here it's quite high. So there is definitely a shift towards the right hand side, which is probably given as the narrative skew value. Uh, so you can understand like a few things that are not quite visible to us. Maybe it could be coming up in these values, like while measuring these metrics, it can be very clear. And ketosis is almost close to zero which means that this particular distribution is close enough to the normal distribution. When we have a high ketosis, there would be probability for us to have a lot of outliers. So when we have a high ketosis, then what would happen is the, the, central, uh, the central values here would be pitted as compared. Like it won't be a bell curve like this, whereas the curve might go much more taller. Uh, so in those cases, the ptosis value would generally be higher, uh, saying that there is high probability of having a lot of many outliers in the data set. So these are all various metrics related to the central tendency, uh, which are used to understand our data much more better. And uh, so this is how statistics have been, been used to understand our data set much more better. And coming to the next one is the percentile. So here, let's say we want to understand the values across different percentile. We can use the quantile functionality here uh, uh, by spacing them uh, on 10 percentage interval. We can see how the values are across various percentiles. So when I execute this, so from 10th percentile till 90th percentile uh, on an 10 percentile interval level, we get various values here. Uh, so this gives us an understanding about like how the data is distributed. So most likely the data is like from 60s to maybe uh, 130s, like maybe up to 140s, because here we are seeing only up to the 90th percentile. Uh, so this helps us in getting an understanding about how the data is distributed. So that's it about various metrics related to central tendency. So next we will go back to the whiteboard and uh, learn more about variability, like what is an variance, what is standard deviation, and what's the difference between them, and finally, what is the standard error of mean, and how it is different from standard deviation. Uh, let's go back to the whiteboard. Coming back to the whiteboard, I just want to explain uh, the uh, variability concepts on a whiteboard before getting into the tutorial. So the various uh, things that we are going to see uh, in the variability is variance, standard deviation, so both of them is a measure to calculate the variability uh, in the data set. So in order to calculate the variance, what we do is we identify the mean of the population or the data set that we have. And we have uh, the values for each and every element. We calculate the difference between them and square them. And uh, we add up all these uh, squared up values and divide it, it by the number of elements that is present in the data set. 
So the value, the end value that we did is the variance uh, that is present in the data set. In order to calculate the standard deviation, it is nothing but the square root of the variance, uh, which would be on scale with the values that is present in our data set. And the final one is uh, the standard um, error mean, the standard error of mean, uh, which is also being uh, called as SEM uh, mostly. So this is to check how accurate is the estimated mean, uh, is the estimated population mean that we have calculated. So it's slightly different from standard deviation. So by in standard deviation, we get uh, to understand about uh, how much the mean value to deviate uh, or how, uh, how much the mean value could vary in the particular data set. Whereas in case of standard error of mean, we calculate how accurate is the mean of the population that we are calculating. Like uh, what is the error rate in the mean that we have calculated for the population. So let's go into the tutorial and then see about the various functionalities that is available in uh, uh, Python, uh, like uh, supported by various packages in order to calculate or in order to get the values for all these uh, metrics. Let's go into the tutorial. Coming back to the tutorial, let's see how to uh, calculate all these uh, variability measures. So the first one is variance. So there is an uh, functionality available as part of NumPy package in order to calculate the variance uh, present in the data set. So in order to use that, as you see on my screen, we need to use numpy.var, V-A-R, and we need to pass on the data set for which we are going to measure the variance. So as it's explained on whiteboard, uh, the variance would be calculated based on that uh, calculation. So it calculates the mean and it calculates like, the difference between mean as well as each and every element, it takes the square of it, adds up all the values and finally divided it with the number of elements that we have. So now here, uh, by executing this, uh, we quickly get the variance uh, for this particular data set here. And in order to get the standard deviation, again, it's part of the NumPy package. We can use numpy.std and pass on the values to get the standard deviation. So by executing this, uh, we can see that the standard deviation for our data set is 24.86, which means that for the, uh, from the mean, um, the various values can shift up to maybe 25 or like slightly more than that. So on average, the standard deviation is 24.86. Sits. And in order to get the uh, standard error of mean, we use uh, a functionality from uh, the stats package, stats.sem, and pass on the value, which will give us a measure for the standard error of mean. So there is a small difference between, like, uh, there is some difference between standard deviation and uh, the standard error of mean. So standard deviation is all in order to understand the variability of uh, the data, how far, like, uh, on average, it uh, it moves from the mean, whereas the standard error of mean uh, helps us in understanding how accurate is the estimated population mean that we have calculated. So these two are like two different metrics. The purpose of purpose are very different, and uh, so these are all some of the measures that are related to the variability. And we can see that there are so much uh, functionalities that is available as part of uh, like. Uh, NumPy and later the other packages in Python, which helps us in calculating these values later uh, in a flash of a second. So that's it for today. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have learned something new, kindly give a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And if you think this video series will be helpful for any of your friend who is trying to learn data science, please share it with them as well. Bye for now. See you on the next session. See ya.